everybody here and thank you for coming to the convention center for reasons of health were nicely spaced out at least some of us are nicely spaced out and, and um, uh, thank you for coming and I wish to thank all of you for um, the support you have shown the judiciary and myself uh, through the years uh, even when you have criticized us this is healthy that there should be comments on the work of the courts. Courts are not above criticism. Uh, and I thank you for the interest that all of you have shown in the workings of the judiciary. I shall be retiring in a few days' time. My last day is Friday, although my very last day, I suppose you can say, is Sunday. So today is the last time uh, I will have the pleasure of uh, addressing your questions as Chief Justice. Um, ten years have gone by very quickly. You'll have many questions for me, I'm sure, and I'll do my best to answer them, but um, uh, you will know from some of my replies that sometimes it's not appropriate to reply to um, certain questions, particularly about cases uh, which are pending. But what I do want to sort of briefly talk about um, are two topics. Um, I'll speak more tomorrow because my farewell sitting is at five o'clock and I shall be saying something uh, then as well. But I do want to say something today about uh, the Chief Justice's mission or the judiciary's mission because this is what I talked about 10 years ago. And also perhaps briefly about what my hopes are uh, for the future. Now, 10 years ago, when I first um, fielded questions uh, from all of you, I was asked whether I had a mission, and I replied, my mission is the same as the judiciary's mission, and it's a simple one, and it's to uphold the rule of law. This remains my mission today, and you can ask my successor, Justice Andrew Chung, when you see him on Monday, I think, and I hope he will say the same to you. The maintenance of the rule of law requires an independent judiciary. The concept of an independent judiciary is required, not just protected by, it's required under the basic law. You're familiar now with the articles, I've given them to you often enough, Articles 2, 19, and 85. You can look it up for yourselves and you can see the concept of the independence of the judiciary referred to and required under the basic law. An independent judiciary ensures, among other things, the protection of rights and freedoms, which are also set out in the basic law. Now, I want to again, talk briefly about what the independence of the judiciary means uh, it's not a political statement. It's not a political concept. What it means, in essence, is that in the handling of cases, judges are going to look only at the law, legal principle in the spirit of the law, looking to decide cases according to the legal merits. And at its most basic, and never lose sight of this, is to decide cases fairly and justly, and not to be influenced by any beliefs, anything, particularly political beliefs, but to be influenced only by the law. And central to this is the concept of equality before the law. Everybody is equal before the law. Nobody is more equal than anybody else. All judges take the judicial oath, and this guides a judge as to what he or she should be doing. And that requires upholding the basic law, bearing allegiance to Hong Kong, to Hong Kong's SAR, and to decide cases fearlessly without fear or favor and handle these cases. Many people 
have said that Hong Kong has changed, changed a lot recently compared with bevo uh, before. Whether that is so or not, I'd like to think that the judiciary remains stable and consistent in upholding the rule of law and abiding by those principles and judges abiding by the judicial oath, as I've mentioned. Our system of law hopefully provides the sort of stability which society often, certainly sometimes needs. My hopes for the future center, uh, center around again the rule of law. It's been said, it's been called the cornerstone of our community. Indeed it is, and it should be respected. I hope the public will have continue to have confidence uh, in the rule of law in our legal system. I believe most people, most of our community do respect and support the rule of law. I've said many times, and I've said at the beginning, that it's good to comment on the work of the courts, even in a negative way, even to criticize the courts. At the very least, it shows an interest in the work of the courts, an interest in something which is important. But in order not to lose the respect and confidence of the people whom the law serves, it's important that any criticisms made, however strong, have a basis to them. And that they are not made just because you're not happy with a particular result. And sometimes we have a lot of cases which have political origins, and those are the case type of cases I'm specifically referring to. As far as the judiciary is concerned, there's a lot of talk also recently about reforms, whether there's a need for reform. Some people say there's a need for reform. Others do so in perhaps strong terms. Our position, when I say our position, I'm referring to the judiciary's position, has all along been the same. If there's any room for improvement, we will pursue it. We will consider it. If there is any reform that is required, give us the details and we will consider it. But it's not particularly satisfactory if there's a call for reform simply on the basis of a result that one doesn't like. One's got to do a little more than that in order to make good a case for reform. Uh, it is certainly not uh, a good starting point or acceptable to say I want reforms to ensure that I will always get the result uh, which I want. So my hope for the future is the maintenance of Hong Kong's rule of law and that Hong Kong remains a society which is governed by the rule of law. So that's all I wish to say and I'll be happy now to uh, do, as, do the best I can and answer your questions. Thank you.